Okay, now we're gonna cover the theory behind the Carnot cycle and the Otto cycle. The, this is, these are both four-stage cycles, and uh, the Carnot cycle, as we uh, talked about before, is the most efficient cycle be uh, operating between two reservoirs. And the way that it works is you, you have a isothermal uh, process, isothermal, followed by adiabatic, followed by isothermal compression. This is isothermal expansion then adiabatic expansion, then isothermal compression, and then we have adiabatic compression. Adiabatic compression. Okay, so the PV diagram for the Carnot cycle looks like this. V initial, P initial. So we have isothermal expansion, so it's gonna go like this, isothermally, right, to some final velocity, we can call V final, right? After that, we're gonna expand adiabatically, so then we're gonna go like this, adiabatically, okay? We can call this one V final prime. Then we're gonna come here adiabatically, to some another final velocity, V final double prime, right? So this is isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, and then here we have isothermal compression and adiabatic, right? So during which stage of this is heat coming into the gas, right? Isothermal heat is coming in, okay? Heat is coming in. Q in. Adiabatic, the definition of an adiabatic process, as I've talked about in chapter 20 and 21, the definition of adiabatic is that there is no heat exchange. So nothing is happening here, you're just expanding it uh, adiabatically. Then over here, you're dumping the heat, Q cold, but that one we don't care about when we're calculating the efficiency, right? So we can just put it with a different color here. So this is going to be Q cold, Q out, so this can, we can also call this Q C, and then this one we can also call Q hot, right? And then the next adiabatic, no heat coming in, right? So uh, the basic diagram of what is happening is that during the isothermal Let's say this is the chamber of gas, and this is a piston. And then there's some heat source putting in heat. All right? So that's going to be your Q in. So then, as you're putting in heat, the, the chamber is staying isothermal. It's, uh, it's staying same temperature, but it's expanding. It's pushing on the piston. It's pushing on the piston, so the piston is moving out. Okay? Then after that, it's expanding adiabatically, no heat exchange, okay? So basically the one way you can do that is to uh, close the seal, everything, uh, take away the heat source, but because the gas is hot, it does work against the piston and it keeps expanding, even though there's no heat coming in, right? Because the gas is already hot, you've already put in heat into it. So it's expanding due to the fact that the gas molecules are already moving fast but you're taking the heat source away. Then, on the way back, you're extracting heat from the system. So maybe you're putting in something that is colder than it, right? The cold reservoir. So bringing the engine into contact with a cold reservoir. Well, now the gas is really uh, hot when it's here, right? Uh, so then, it's gonna, you're gonna extract heat from it. So when you extract heat, the piston is going to go back down, right? The piston is going to go back down. And then from here to here, you take away the cold reservoir, okay? And the compression continues until it reaches the, the final, the compression continues until it reaches the final volume, the initial volume, then the whole stage continues again. If you watch one of my videos, I actually have a demo because it's much easier to show with actual equipment. So 
please watch the demo that I have on the Carnot cycle and it's an actual experiment that we perform in the class with the four cycle stage here same exact four cycle stage so you can actually better visualize what is an isothermal what's an adiabatic what's an isothermal what's an adiabatic and how do you actually perform that in an experimental setting okay so then what would be the efficiency of this engine okay the efficiency of the engine is going to be now how much heat is going into the system over here right well we've said earlier that uh, if an object if a process is uh, isothermal then you have q is equal to work plus delta E, the delta E is zero, right? So the Q in, in the isothermal process, is the same as the work, which is NRT, right? So it's just gonna be the Q in is gonna be NRT ln of V final over uh, the V initial, right? V final over V initial. The heat in, in the first stage and that's also going to equal to the work that the gas did in the first stage right so this is going to equal to the work that the gas did in the first stage work one okay so then uh in the second stage the gas is also going to do work then in the third stage the gas is going to do negative work then it's going to do negative work now if i add up all these works and prove the general formula there's a several steps that you're going to be doing when you prove this, uh, from here to here, and then here to here, and then coming back, and then here to here, right? So you could actually prove that when you actually do this equation, this is what you end up getting, okay? Uh, uh, work out is gonna be equal to Q hot minus Q cold, or Q in is gonna be the same thing as Q hot, right? So it could be proven by doing general equations taking the area under this graph, adding this work, adding this work, subtracting this work, subtracting this work, getting the area here, putting it in the top, and then dividing it by the Q in. It could be proven that this is equal to T hot minus T cold over T hot. What I'll do is when I'm actually doing an example with numbers, I'll actually solve the efficiency of this engine. I'll actually show with numbers that uh, the this gives you the same as this, and then it'll be kind of an indirect proof, okay, with numbers and stuff. So then this is equal to T hot minus T cold, so then we can write this as one over T cold over T hot, okay? So now let's talk about the auto cycle. The auto cycle is the cycle that's used in car engines. I have the intake cycle, which is where the gasoline enters, which is when the gasoline enters the cylinder. Right, so it look, kind of looks like this. Uh, the, this is not part of the actual four stroke cycle, but the PV diagram would look like this. Uh, v initial, P initial, and then so the stage one would look like this, the intake stroke, okay? So the gasoline enters, the volume increases, as the gasoline enters the chamber, the volume of the chamber increases to some final volume, right? And then uh, stage two begins, adiabatic compression. The compression stroke is called. Adiabatic compression. So then we go here adiabatically. That's two. So this is one of the four, one of the strokes of the four stroke cycle. Okay? So that's number two. So we, this is the official, the first one. Four stroke engine. Okay, so then what's going to happen when you adiabatically compress the gas? It's going to heat up, right? So the gas you're letting the gasoline come in, then you're compressing it adiabatically. The gas is heating up already. Okay, so then the next one we have spark plug, spark plugs fire, spark plugs fire. So this is the combustion stage. Okay, combustion. So when the spark plugs uh, fire, of course, you're going to heat the gas even more. So then this is also volumic. You're not compressing it. You're not uh, expanding it. You're just letting the combustion take place. Heat is coming in. So during the adiabatic compression, no heat comes in. But during the spark plug uh, combustion stage, of course, 
uh, heat comes in. So we can call that Q hot. Okay? Coming in here. Okay, the next one is idiomatic expansion. Idiomatic expansion. Okay, this one is the second one of the four stroke cycle. And then this one is the third. So adiabatic expansion, this is another name for it, is the power stroke. Okay, so then adiabatically, so this is number two. Uh, So this is number three, then we adiabatically expand, this is number four, I'm including the first one in our cycle, so that'd be one, two, three, four, okay? So then, of course, no heat exchange happens during that adiabatic expansion, and this is called the power stroke, and then the fifth one is um, exhaust valve is open and the energy is expelled isovolumically. So exhaust valve opens and energy expelled. So this is the fourth stroke. And then so what is, what is that? Isovolumic. So you're basically letting the heat out. Right? So Q hot is coming in. And then, of course, you have to dump some heat. So we go, we go here like this. Maybe I'll use another color. Q cold. Okay? So this is Q hot coming in, and then this is Q cold. And then after that, you have the exhaust stroke. Exhaust stroke. Which is, again, not part of the... This is the intake stroke. Uh, cycle, this is the exhaust. So you're exhausting the gasoline back out. Here you're expelling the energy out, and then here you're uh, exhausting the gasoline that came in, exhausting it out, and then a new gas, a new gasoline is coming in, the intake cycle, and then now you're going to start heating that. So basically this is number, uh, number six would be here. You see? And then after that you repeat. One, new gasoline comes in. Okay, you uh, heat it, adiabatically you compress it, you heat it, you heat it some more, then uh, adiabatically expand the power stroke. During the power stroke is when the actual gasoline is doing work and allowing the car to go forward. So the power stroke is very, very important. And pretty much that's what's propelling the car forward, this number four, the power stroke. Okay, so then uh, uh, compressing it, dumping the heat out, and then number six, dumping the gasoline out, and then new gasoline comes in, and then you keep recycling. Okay? So the efficiency of this um, engine, the efficiency is going to be the same thing. It's going to be the work out. So it's going to be the area under this graph divided by how much heat is coming in, Q hot. So, of course, you can't just do work and by a certain amount of heat coming in, so Q cold cannot be zero. Remember the second law of thermodynamics? Q cold has to be some number. So you, second law of thermodynamics prevents there from, from you skipping this stage. Exhaust valve opens and the energy expels. Second law of thermodynamics says you cannot have that. You have to expel the energy, Q cold, into a cold reservoir, okay? Okay, so that's where is that going? Through the muffler of the car, you're expelling the heat through the muffler, and you are also polluting the air. So the entropy of the universe is increasing, right? So definitely you need the exhaust valve open and then energy being expelled, right? So that's the Q cold. Okay, so then you take the area under this graph, which is the workout, and then you divide it by the amount of heat that came in, and then I'll do that again with an example uh, when I'm solving with numbers and stuff, and then we can get uh, an idea of how to calculate that, okay? So now you're introduced a little bit into the Carnot cycle, which is the most efficient engine running between two temperatures, and the auto cycle, which is the four-stroke cycle used in most car engines, okay? Thank you very much.